The Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha visited Parliament today when the 14th person to die in a fuel queue was reported. His visit came when Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe was making a special statement on the discussions with the International Monetary Fund. Due to the state of bankruptcy our country is in, we have to submit a plan of our debt sustainability to them separately. Only when they are satisfied with this plan, we can reach an agreement at the staff level. This is not a straightforward process, but we have been able to end the round of discussions effectively despite these difficulties. Now the next round is to submit to them the plan on debt restructuring and sustainability, which has been prepared by the financial and legal experts Lazard and Clifford Chance. We hope to submit this report to the IMF by August. If we make a determined journey along this roadmap, we can achieve an economic growth rate of negative one by the end of 2023. By 2025, our aim is to create a surplus in the primary budget. I would like to give you an idea of the debt we have to pay off so far. 3.4 billion US dollars between June and December this year. 5.8 billion dollars in 2023. 4.9 billion dollars in 2024. 6.2 billion dollars in 2025. 4 billion dollars in 2026. 4.3 billion dollars in 2027. The total debt burden of the government at the end of 2021 was 17.5 trillion rupees and by March of 2022 it had increased to 21.6 trillion rupees. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, we will have to face difficulties in 2023 as well. This is the truth. This is the reality. Some may try to cover up this reality by showing the people a false image. But this reality will be confirmed in time. At my invitation, the head of the Food and Agriculture Organization will visit Sri Lanka next week. No matter how far we are, in this economic crisis, we cannot forget the problems faced by the poorest section of the society regarding food. The upcoming interim budget will allocate money to provide short-term reliefs to the poorest section of society. This relief will be given to the people under the Social Welfare Benefits Act. MP Andrukumar Sanaka has stated that if the country is handed over to him, it will be restored in six months. Indeed, it would be a very good thing if it can be done. Taking a country whose economic growth rate has fallen to negative six or seven to a positive economic growth rate in six months is an action that has never happened in any country in the world. But we cannot rule out Anrukumara Desanayaka's opinion that it has not happened so far. That is why I am asking MP Anrukumara Desanayaka to submit his plan to the President. If you don't want to go to the President, present it to this Parliament. Let us discuss about it in Parliament. If that plan is better and more effective than the plan we are implementing now, we will implement it. Such a plan would be brilliant enough to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. So if there is such a plan, I am ready to resign and let him take up this position. I am ready to give up my position and support that program. Atharina Sudana, Mamma made Janadi Poitumatakiano, May, 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 Salasma Sartagan, Mang, 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 During the Prime Minister's special statement, MPs from the Samagijana Balavegia protested, demanding the President to resign immediately. I would request him to appoint Anrukumara Desanayaka as the Prime Minister. This issue cannot be solved with the traditional method of yelling. We have fallen into this situation because of that. We need to look for an alternative. SJB MPs once again protested when the president was leaving the parliament.